Hey everyone, it's Greg. I'm here today to talk about how I'm going to use this lawnmower and that inverter through that generator input in order to power my entire house. All right, now in the basement, this is my new panel. And uh, we have the interlock, generator interlock up top here. So that input feeds into here, and this breaker is off. The main breaker is on, um, and this plate slides and prevents them from both being on at the same time, connecting the inverter to the grid. So first I have to shut the main power off to the house. In the event of a power outage, it would already be disconnected from the grid, but I would still have to throw that switch. All right, now I can slide this up and turn on the interlock. Now let's go back up to the garage. All right, back up here. Lights don't do anything right now. Power is off. Here's the inverter. Here's the mower. Now on this Ryobi mower, the main connections to the battery are right under the seat here. That's an Anderson uh, it's a SB125. out. All right. So this is the battery side and this feeds the mower itself. I'm going to plug in my inverter. All right it is easiest if I unscrew this. Um, it's bolted down to the, to the tractor. So I have unscrewed it. This is the main feed to the inverter. It's powered up. And I also have this jumper lead where I can still run over to the tractor and this will allow the charger to still work. It actually does allow the tractor to power up so I can do that. Obviously I wouldn't drive anywhere with the inverter connected but um, basically it just allows the charger to work um, so I can backfeed power to the mower while I'm running everything else. All right, so now the inverter has power. It's going to take this. It's a locking 30 amp NEMA connector. And I'm going to come up here. And let's see here. Should plug right in. And then it's a, just a tiny twist. So now the inverter is powered from the mower. I think those are uh, one gauge wires, I believe. And then up to my input. And last but not least, the inverter has a little data connector for a remote screen, which is this. And I plug that into there. All right, so we are plugged in. Here's our control panel for the inverter. The lights are out. Well, everywhere, the whole house is out. So, power this up. Oh, and the lights just turned on. So the house is now running from the inverter. The fan's just turned on. Show all green. Go back to here. What are we saying? Come on. 36% output load. And so we're running the house. All right, it's a few minutes later. Still pulling about 50% load here. We can, uh, garage doors work. Lighting works. My one heat pump is on. The main heat pump is off. I'm going to do one more test with the amp clamp here just to show the power's flowing. Still from the, uh, there are four 100 amp hour 12 volt uh, lead acid batteries in this mower. So it should be, they're in a 48 volt configuration. The inverter is a 48 volt inverter. But it should be over four kilowatt hours of total power. Uh, so, let's 
just got the amp clamp on there. And we've got 30, just about 32 amps at something close to 48 volts, whatever that works out to. 1500 watts, 2000 watts, something like that. So I'm going to go ahead and undo this and get back on grid power and get my solar system running again on this sunny day. Last step to go back to grid power. This is where our inverter power is coming in from. Interlock fault plate falls down. And big guy's hard to push. Hang on one second. Main breaker is re enabled. I can go ahead and power up my solar system, my heater, hot water heater. So it's a little bit manual. I have to click through some of the circuits to make sure I don't overload the inverter. But that's fine in the event of a power outage. Um, it's not too much work to connect and I can run my whole house and not drag extension cords through it like with my last setup running an inverter off of the test. Alright back up in the garage. Uh, the inverter is still connected and powered up. Um, it's just a few seconds from when I just switched back from grid power. We are now pulling just two amps from the uh, from the mower there and two amps at 48 volts uh, you know, about 96 watts and that is about the idle consumption uh, of the inverter itself is 90 watts or 95 watts so um, that's all we're seeing here so there's no load on it um, right now so I will go power it off all right I'm all wrapped up here with our test just wanted to say this is a Sigineer power inverter model APC 6048D. The uh, mower is the Ryobi, it's a Home Depot brand. Um, again, this is a 100 amp hour, 38 inch deck. I don't know the model number. Um, but yeah, that's the setup. I can run my house in the event of a power outage. All right, last but not least, I wanted to show I have this little, um, this is an Emporia energy monitor. So this is showing me my usage. Well, not every circuit, but I have a lot of it hooked up. So I'm currently pulling 5.3 kilowatt. My solar is currently generating 8.4 kilowatt. And I'm netting 3 kilowatt is basically being sent back to the grid at the moment. So, um... Pretty neat app. Um, it's, it's coming along. It doesn't have the nicest user interface, but it's plenty for what I need to see. So we're back. We are back on grid power, of course. So that was the last thing I wanted to show.